So many, so many great stories tonight. I never know. Uh, let me say as a prologue, I'm so happy for this because uh, as a, a technically a millennial, uh, I can't really afford therapy. And this is only $10, so Jim, thank you so much for that. Uh, I really appreciate it. Hear me out. Uh, Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I don't think anyone, exem and hear me out, I don't think anyone exemplified that more than in the dark night, uh, the movie, <laughs> The Joker. Do you, do you guys know The Dark Knight, The Joker? Where he's talking to Harvey Dent, and Harvey Dent is really mad at him, and the Joker's just like, I'm like a, like a dog chasing a car. If I found it, I wouldn't know what to do with it. You know? And uh, I can really relate to that, and Gandhi, uh, because I feel, I don't think all barely pubescent boys are like adorable sociopaths, but I think that I kind of was when I was a, a middle school age kid. Like there were two things I loved more than, I loved McDonald's and I loved Coca-Cola. Uh, I grew up, I'm not bragging, I grew up in Northeast Philadelphia and, uh, <laughs> There, uh, we would, we, uh, McDonald's was like, like I didn't, I was Catholic, I didn't have like any coming of age star money growing up, so for me, like, when I told my dad, like, dad, I no longer want the two cheeseburger meal, today I want the Big Mac meal, like, I felt like that was the day that, like, I became a man, you know? Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, we would play basketball every day, and, like, we, we only really had money when we, it was kind of, when we, uh, were altar servers at funerals. Uh, and so we would, all, we would go there, we'd still go to McDonald's every day just to like smell the fumes uh, after we're done playing. But this, uh, you know how like when you're a kid and you see a flaw in the Matrix, like the adult Matrix, like you just have to pull at it as hard as you can? Like when I was in sixth grade, I like faked appendicitis and almost had an operation. It was, like I'm adorable sociopath, right? And so... <laughs> So we go to McDonald's this one day, and this day is a game changer. We have money. We just served the funeral. Things are going great. <laughs> and, like, I, yeah, I feel like you guys are kind of scared of me right now. It's all right. I'm not I'm Catholic. I'm a good guy. Uh, so <laughs> we, uh, we go to McDonald's, and we see the sign on the board, and we have to regroup outside because it's a sign that we've never seen before. And we're like, it said free refills. Right? My one friend says, like, yeah, with an S, right? Like, you saw that. And so we try to figure out what we're going to do. And we're like, should we all go in and get one and come back out? And my one friend and I decide, like, my two friends are like, no, it's a trap. Don't do it. <laughs> but my other friend and I are like, we're, this is where we're going to get one cup, and we're going to get as many refills as we possibly can. So we get one medium-sized cup. We get two straws. Like, technically, I guess it was my first date. And uh, we... <laughs> We get the cup and we go outside and we start drinking it and we quickly get like wasted on uh, Coca-Cola. Like we drank one and like, I don't know why we thought this would make a difference, but we like tried to enter from like all different sides of the store. Like we went from the left side, from the right side, from the drive through we went through the play place. We get to drink number 15 and my friends say, let's spin you around a couple times. So we do that and we go in and we get our last drink and we come outside to the playpen and we take a drink and we both are laughing so hard, uh, like caffeine wasted, and we, we both throw up into the playpen, and the manager comes out and he says, you're never welcome at McDonald's ever again! And he kicks us out, and um, we're like, oh, right, whatever, like I don't really, I blacked out, I think. So, so it, like, we go back like the next day, and we buy a soda just to like see what had happened, and, uh, this is not the end of the, hear me out. So uh, the manager sees us and they gets you like they told him he didn't have the authority to kick us out or whatever. So like he puts a mark on our cup and he says one refill. And we're like, all right, we changed the world a little bit today. We changed the world. And so I grew up and like took that experience to heart and got out of college. My first job was teaching uh, middle school at a Catholic elementary school in North Philadelphia. And I was like, I'm gonna teach these kids about Gandhi. So I do, I do that, and they're like, you look like Napoleon Dynamite. And I'm like, all right. And they then 
proceed. Uh, there was one day where I gave a couple kids detention, so they all said, Mr. Clark, today we're not eating hot lunch. I was like, that's not the point of a hunger strike, but whatever, I'm glad that you're enacting change. <sighs> so this goes on for about 10 years of me just like trying to resist chaos and them just being absolutely insane and it's, it's frustrating, it's hard. I said this is gonna be a therapy session. I'm sorry if this is weird. So last year, I still love soda, I drink soda every day. Last year, Mayor Kenny, that draconian fascist, <laughs> puts this soda tax where now it's like $4 per soda, and you only get like five minutes to tell a story, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but I know that, you know, so like I go to drown my sorrows at a local watering hole, so I drive to Burger King. <laughs> and where there's usually a fountain that you can pour refills to your heart's content. And there is a man standing, like a large man standing in full camouflage in front of the soda machine. I'm like, what are you here for? He's like, I'm here to make sure things don't get out of control. <sighs> There was a bouncer in front of the soda fountain machine <laughs> in North Philadelphia. And for a second I was upset, but I was like, maybe the manager from that Northeast Philadelphia like 10 years ago was thinking like, okay, like, you know, we don't want any kids coming in here and causing any chaos again. Like, we're gonna really lock shit down. And I felt like, you know, maybe I need to start trying to stop preventing chaos and start trying to cause a little more. Thank you. <laughs>